after you have open traction waveform 13 of course you're seeing it right in front of you right now we're going to create a new project all right so i'm going to go to new project and i'm going to type it a name now this does have templates that it comes with but i just want to keep it very simple so that way you know exactly what you're doing so i'm going to say test july all right of course it's the last day of july and then after I type in my title, you want to make sure you have it set in a good location. Right now I have it on my B drive, waveform projects, which works out fine. Everything else is good to go in create project. Before you think about starting to record, you need to make sure that you have your settings correct. And you might even want to start there first before you create your first project. So let's go back to settings. And then we want to look at audio devices. Now for me, I am using my ASIO driver or ACO driver if you want to call it that. And this is my Zoom L8 ASIO driver. So first things first, whatever interface you're using, if you're using the interface, you want to make sure that those drivers are installed first. Then you want to make sure you have your device plugged in before you open up Waveform. This usually goes for any DAW that you open up. Make sure you have your interface plugged in and on first, so that way you won't have any complications with connection. After you have it plugged up, then what you wanna do is make sure that you have it set on ASIO here. Now, if you have an interface that does not accept ASIO, then you're probably gonna switch down to Windows Audio Exclusive or Windows Audio or Windows Audio Low Latency. The good thing about this is that you can actually test it all right, I can go here and I can test my sound. Okay, and it'll play that frequency. Hopefully you heard it on your end and that will let you know that you're getting a signal from your interface. Right here, you have your sample rate. Now this interface only goes up to 48,000 Hertz. I think it goes up to 96, but right here it's at 48, which is perfectly fine because that's what most people use for audio anyway. Over here is where it's very important because I had issues when I first got in waveform, I couldn't understand how I was getting signal going in, but wasn't getting signal coming out. And sometimes you might have to go over here and you might have to set these up differently. So right now I have enabled my output one plus two is my output default wave output for waveform. Now in Cakewalk by BandLab, I normally have my output set for three and four, so it's a little different here and you can see three and four is disabled. I have also enabled my master L and master R. Now these are all my inputs and you wanna make sure that this stuff is enabled because sometimes none of this will be enabled and you'll be like, I can't, you know, I can't get a signal on this channel or I'm unable to record anything. And it might be, this is the issue, making sure those are enabled. When I click on this input, did you notice that all of these extra settings came up at the bottom? So there's a record mode, which is very important. There's three different modes. Don't make recordings from this device. Uh, don't have a set on it. That's just in case you don't want to use this at all. Replace old clips and edit with new ones, basically overwriting your clip or overlay newly recorded clips onto edit. File format, I'm gonna keep it at WAVE. You can change it to AIF or FLAC if that's better for you, but I'm gonna keep it at wave. My bit depth is at 24 bit. I can go up to 32 bit, but 24 bit is perfect for what I'm doing. And then I want to use the same properties for all devices. Now there are a lot of other settings that are inside here and you can look to the left and you can see multiple things. You have appearance, there's a display scale, which I play with to make things look a little bigger so you can Zoom in or zoom out, not zoom in or zoom out, but just change the scale of everything. Because when you first install, it might look very tiny. So you might want to adjust it to make it a little bigger. I made mine a little bigger. All right, we have control surfaces. So if you have a control surface, like I normally use my Impact LX25, uh, right now it's not plugged up or it's not on either one. And so it won't show, but normally it'll pop up. Under general, there are some things that I advise you to uncheck and the first thing is going to be at the way bottom where it says saving when it says saving there's a part that says generate audio preview files automatically and what that does is when you're on the welcome screen 
like I have this song Nightlife edit one. So you can see this little wave. What happens is it'll start rendering the track once you finish and it might render the track after you shut down the program. It might slow your computer down some. So I don't really want it to render this audio automatically. So I shut that mode off or I uncheck that option. So you can uncheck that too as well. So let me show you how to go about setting up for recording. All right, so I have track one here and let's just start with doing vocals because that's the most simple thing. And I told you already that I'm using input one. All right, so cool thing about it is that all you gotta do is just click on the track Make sure it's set up for the input. Now, if it wasn't set on the right input, I can right click and then go down to, oh, it's input two. Well, really, I'm not getting a signal on input two, so I know it's input one because I'm getting a signal now. So make sure you're getting a signal. Record, record enable, enable, and now you're gonna notice you might hear an echo because I am using my input monitoring. So I'm actually monitoring the sound that's coming from my interface, going to the computer and coming back to the interface into my headphones so I can hear it. So there's a slight latency delay. Now, this isn't much of a bad delay, but sometimes it can be worse. If you need to adjust the latency, let's go back up to settings again. And let's go to audio devices. And then here you see it says audio buffer size. Now, you might be able to change it if you have it set on anything besides the ASIO, but for the ASIO, you have to use your control panel, which is right here. And for my control panel, what I want to do is I can move it to the left. If I want to get it closer with less latency, or I want to move it to the right if I want to get it safer. So to the left, it's going to be better latency, but more memory, more CPU being used, and it might be more taxing on your computer, period. To the right is going to be better if you're starting to use a lot of plugins or a lot of effects or if you got a lot of tracks on your uh, project. So, all right, let's record something. And I'm just going to talk. Yeah, I said it. You know, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Next thing I would do is add another track. So you could click on the plus sign that's right here. Or you can do T. Now here, normally on Cakewalk, you do Control T. On this one, you just do T, all right? So, and now I add another track. Now, the cool thing about these is that it doesn't really tell you what kind of track it is. It ju you just know, you assume it's an audio track, but I can change this quickly into an instrument track by adding an instrument. So right down here is a plus sign. You can also use the plus signs up here, but if you click on the plus sign, then it's going to open up all of these plugins. And this includes all the audio plugins and all the instruments. And so if I wanted to put an instrument on here, I can go to arrow and I'm going to use waveform because I've really grown fond of the instruments. Doesn't provide you much with the free version, but it's enough to get some stuff started. So I'm going to use this for oscillator. All right. This is what it looks like. And it has a bunch of sounds. You can notice that my echo went off now because I'm on a different track, um, which is cool. So now how do we go about recording this? It's like, well, what if you don't have a virtual controller? Well, you still can control it and you still can record. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to enable it first. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to bring up. It's I love how it's just a little shortcut down here. We're going to bring up this keyboard. All right. And it's going to allow us to do some MIDI typing. So I can press. The keys on my keyboard and record. So in order, once you have it enabled, you can press record. Yeah, I said it. You know, I said it. Yeah, I said it. All right, I can stop that. Now, once you get out of the, once you're in this mini typing thing, pretty much all the keys are gonna work for this mini typing thing. So you have to exit out of it. It's the only thing I probably don't like. You probably can change the keys so they don't register with everything. So like if I wanted to go back 
I can press W, but I couldn't press W while the keyboard was up. Otherwise, I would just be pressing another note on the keyboard. But it's okay, because you can toggle back before them easily. All right, so let's hear what we got. Yeah, I said it. You know I said it. Yeah, I said it. Okay, cool. So we've recorded a vocal track. We recorded a uh, instrument track. And now, of course, there's different sounds in here. So I, if I wanted to change the sound, still got the same data that I recorded. Yeah. I said it. You know I said it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, that's fat. Okay, anyway, I got excited for a second. All right, so I really love that for Oscillator, it is a great plug-in, and you can just really tweak everything in there. And that is something free that comes with Waveform Free 13, which is pretty amazing. All right, so the next step that we're going to do is actually show you how to go about exporting this so that way you can, you know, load it up to whatever distribution you have. I use DistroKid, definitely. I have a link below if you want to check it out. You can get a percentage off of that. But whatever you use, you might be ready to upload your song, you know, and maybe you said, oh, I mastered it myself or I mixed it myself and I'm ready to go. Cool. If that's you, I want to show you how to do this. Now, this is not a master song and I would not export it like this normally, but I'm going to double click on all the tracks. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click the tracks. You can press control and click them individually or you can press control A and it'll select them. Then what you want to do now is go down to file. If you don't see this menu popped up, just press the little arrow with a line under it, and then it'll open it up. Then you want to go to File, Export, Render to a File. Okay, click on that. Very important. Make sure you know where you saved it at. So I'm going to go to Browse, and I'm going to save it in a different spot. I'm just going to save it under Music, okay? And that's okay. It can be called Export too. I'm not worried about that. I could change the name later on, but... So format wise, we want a wave, we want a stereo, we want a sample rate to be the same. That's fine. Sample size could be the same. Not worried about now. If this was going on a CD, then we probably would cut that down to 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz. But for now, this is fine. You can normalize it if you want to. Uh, you can render just a marked region of it. You can render each track to a separate file. So some other options and you can see it kind of already exported it already. So let's go ahead and render it. So it doesn't take long to render because it's not that long. So it's like less than five measures. So I'm going to go to my folder, find out where it is. It's under music, this PC music. And I did a, this helps sometimes to do a sort by date and then just set it. So I set it up to the most current date, which is today. And there it is. Test July edit one export two. Then I can click on that. Yeah. I said it. You know I said it. Yeah. Okay. All right. It plays and I am good to go. I know this probably left room for questions. So please let me know in the comments. What do you need help with in waveform? Let me know specifically and I will look into it. I do not have all the answers, but I definitely will research what I don't know. And I'm hoping that I have a good answer for you. All right. This is just a norm. This is Waveform Explored. Love you all. Peace.